This is why being a good Christian kid didn't work out. If you're anything like me, you grew up as a Christian in a Christian household with parents that did their best to raise you according to the Bible. And for the most part, they did a pretty good job. But then you begin to find out that there's the formation of two lives that happen within your life. Two lives. The first life is the life that you live with your church and with your Christian parents and family and your Christian friends. And the other life that you live is the one that you live in secret or with your non-Christian friends or maybe at school. And these are the two lives that begin to form. And so for me, the, the first life looked like, well, me sitting on the front steps of my church, reading my Bible as people would enter on Sunday morning so that people would think that I was this great Christian kid. I was probably 11 years old at this point, but I sat there deliberately. So people would look at me and be like, wow, this kid is really spiritually, probably knows the Bible super well. He's better than other kids his age. He's probably more mature or just he's a better person. That's what I wanted people to see me as a good Christian kid. And then the other life that was forming was <clears throat> behind the scenes. I was struggling deeply with lust and I was trying to navigate how I could break free from it. But at the same time, I felt like I was giving in more times than I actually found victory. My conscience was being seared. And what I mean by that was I was taking in so much of this kind of lustful material online that it didn't really hinder my conscience as much as it used to. I began to be okay with it. I, I began to kind of not feel as guilty as I used to. Uh, like at the beginning, I would feel, oh my goodness, I'd feel so bad. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm watching this. I'm supposed to be a Christian. I, God, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll never do this again. And you'd say that multiple times and you say that every time. God, I'll never do this again. I'll never do this again. I'll never watch this again. But then you do. And then as time goes on, you begin to be okay with these two lives, the life of a good Christian kid and then the life that he lives behind the scenes in secret or with his non-Christian friends. And the challenge was as well, I had this pressure on me or this understanding that God needed me to be perfect. That was the only way that God was going to accept me. At the same time, I understood like the gospel, right? There was the head acknowledgement that Jesus came to die on the cross for my sins so that I could be forgiven. But what that, what that meant for me at that point was he was going to forgive everything I did in my past, right? He was going to forgive everything I did as a non-Christian. But then as a Christian, it was my duty to keep up this facade or present myself as, as a good Christian kid in order to be accepted and loved by God. And with that expectation, with that pressure, now I had to operate in this space where I was ignorant of my own sin, where I, I wasn't acknowledging it and I wasn't confessing it because I tried to pretend that it wasn't there in order for me to accept love by God and be accepted by him. I, I desperately wanted that. I wanted to be that Christian. I wanted to be loved by God. And so when I was partaking in the sin, I would just have to push it off to the corner, push it under the rug and say, no, 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 that's not, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I'm still good. I'm still good with God. And so there was this disconnect, ultimately these two lives, and maybe you've experienced this too in your life. You have this life of being this good Christian or trying to present yourself as a good Christian. But then you have this other life, this other life behind the scenes where you're struggling and you don't know, maybe it's pornography for you, maybe it's masturbation, it's lust, it's greed, it's gossip, it's pride, whatever that is behind the surface that maybe you try to push off and say, it's not that big a deal, but this is kind of who I am underneath the surface. These two lives exist in, when there's a disconnect between the head and the heart. That's what it was for me where I understood the Bible. I understood the gospel. I understood theology. I was listening to theology podcasts from the time I was like 11 years old. That wasn't a big issue for me. It wasn't that I didn't have a, I had a lack of understanding of what the Bible said, but it was rather that there was, that yet to be an internal transformation or an understanding that I could let go of this desire, not necessarily the, the desire, because I think the desire to honor God. And that that's, that's great. But this expectation that I was going to be perfect, I had to let go of that in order for me to come to terms with my sin and to really humble myself in repentance. Now, if you, maybe you've been in a toxic church environment where you haven't been given the space 
to be authentic, to be real. You felt like you needed to put on a face. That's awful, right? Because it puts you in the space of continuing on in this double life. But maybe you have been in a space where people have been open and, and real, but still you've held on to your pride so much that you don't want to open up or you don't want to confess that maybe all that I am isn't, you know, it's I'm not just this one person that presents himself to be super awesome. I'm actually this other person that struggles deeply behind the scenes. And the truth is, is that what we need to do is we need to humble ourselves to repent and merge the two, to understand that we're not just this perfect Christian, that we're not just this person that's got it all together and has no questions, has no doubts and no struggles and none of that. No, we are also this person that struggles deeply with, with sin, but at the same time, we can overcome it through the power of God and the Holy Spirit in our life. And that when we repent from it and when we confess it on a daily basis, this is something that, that, that begins to take its power away because now we're not just struggling behind the scenes, but we're inviting God into the picture. We're not just trying to push it under the rug and, and say, hey, it's not that big a deal. I'm, I can still keep on this good Christian persona. We're saying, no, no, actually, this is a big deal. This is something that is separating me relationally from God, even though as a Christian, we know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. But at the same time, when we have unconfessed sin in our life, that puts up a relational blockage where we're not going to be praying. Like if you have unconfessed sin, how authentic are you going to be with God, right? If I'm going to pretend like I didn't just do what I just did and I'm going to pray to God like everything's cool, what kind of relationship is that? So there's a relational blockage there when we, when we pretend that everything's okay. And that's why we need the heart and the head uh, to kind of merge where we're not just believing these good things. But this is an internal reality that we're experiencing in this moment. And that can only happen through the power of the Holy Spirit. I think personally of the, uh, the Pharisee who went up to pray. This is a parable that Jesus told. And he went up to pray and he said, God, thank you that I'm not like other men. These extortioners, these, these uh, adulterers, these idolaters, and also this tax collector. Thank you that I'm not like those guys. I resonate with that because that's where I was in my Christian faith, even though I was, in a sense, living this double life of, of non-unconfessed sin. I believe that I was a good guy because, hey, at least I'm not as bad as those guys, right? Like, okay, I, I, I do some bad things every once in a while, but at least I'm not as bad as those guys. But what does it mean to truly repent in your life? Maybe you've been living this double life and you want out of it. What does it mean to truly repent? Well, it's not being this Pharisee, who's just like, God, thank you, you know, that I'm not like other men. It's actually the tax collector later on in the parable who says, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. This is the repentance that we need to be embodying here. Some people, they're okay with living the double life. They live it their whole lives. And we have examples in the scriptures of what it looks like to live a double life. You think of Judas Iscariot. He walked with Jesus for three years, seeing his miracles, um, eating with him, breaking bread with him, getting the truth, the head knowledge, right? But there was no heart transformation. And when push came to shove, Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And I think in a lot of ways, we can all resonate with that betrayal of Jesus because we have all walked with Jesus. We've heard, especially if you grew up in the church, in a sense, you had that same experience of walking with Jesus or maybe even seeing particular miracles or, or people being healed by God in your church and, and things where you're like, okay, I, I recognize that I, I can see with my, with my eyes and my head, I understand who Jesus is and I understand what this is all about, but... At the same time, I still don't have that heart transformation. And so you could walk with Jesus for all that time in a sense, but still betray him, still not want him. What I want for you is a humble, a real, authentic faith. I literally couldn't care less about how much Bible knowledge you think you have or how far along that you've gotten in your, you know, yearly Bible reading or like, I believe it is so important to get into the word of God, to understand theology, because that's how we learn more about God. But if we know God to, you know, about God so much, right? You understand so much theology and you can spout it all off and yet you don't know him. It's worth nothing. It is worth nothing nothing. So maybe this is a wake up call for you. Maybe you've been in this Christian space for a long time, but God's never been real to you. And I'm not here to say that I can just 
You can just choose one day to experience God or for him to become real to you. But what you can do is to submit your will to him, to submit your life to him, to stop living the double life and, and to have this um, new orientation and new value system where the top value isn't coming across as, as a good Christian, but rather to seek God humbly. This is where we need to lay down our double life of being just totally honest with God and say, God, this is where I'm at. This is all, these are all my struggles. You know already everything. And when you get to that place of vulnerability with God, that's where relationships grow. You think about a relationship with a human being. Are you going to get any kind of place there relationally if you're not being open with them, if you're not being honest with them, if you're not being vulnerable with them, if you feel like you're hiding some things with them because you think they're going to judge you or they're going to say, oh, I thought you were this whole per this person, different person the whole time and now they reject you. But we can understand from God, God's perspective, that he already knows where you're at. He's not surprised by these things that you've been trying to hide from him or trying to gloss over or pretend that they're not that big of a deal. He knows all that already. But I look to the story of the prodigal son and, and how that father in that story, he gave the son um, the money. And you think about it, like the inheritance, you think about it. This father knew the son, right? It wasn't that the son just one day was like probably this good son and he did something out of character where he took this money and did something bad and then came back. It's like, no, th this, this was the character of the son where when the father gave him the inheritance, man, he already knew, I bet. Like this is just my take, but he already knew he was going to go spend it on whatever else, right? He already knew he was going to do that. But in so doing, the, the son came back and, and he was on his face in repentance. Like he got to the end of his robes and say, okay, I need help. And the father's like, you know what? I knew you were going to betray me. I knew you were going to, I knew you were going to backstab me in this way, but I'm still thankful that you came back. I'm still grateful that you came back. I think that's a picture of God, right? It truly is because when he, he knew that we were going to backstab him, he knew we were going to rebel against him. We, he knew all that stuff. But yet he still receives us back with joy and with celebration and delight and he throws a party. So this is my plea to you today. Like uh, th this channel literally means nothing to me if it can't help you walk with Jesus authentically. So this is my plea to you is today. Just get honest with God. Get honest with God. Get out the noise. Like turn off the phone. Turn off Netflix. You know. Block out, block out that stuff, to delete TikTok, and just get really honest with God about where you're at and begin to just seek him. Seek him. Don't just try to seek deep, you know, all the, all the stuff about him or what people say about him. Seek him. And, and that is where you begin. That is where you begin. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos like this all the time. I want to give a huge shout out to everyone on Patreon. It is because of your guys' support that I can continue to make videos like this. It's not the big clickbaity type videos that you're going to get tons of views on. And I understand that. But the reason that I can make these and still continue to support um, and sustain this ministry is because of the people on Patreon that enable me to do that and make content that I think it, it digs a little bit deeper than the classic Christian clickbaity content where I can move to a place of real seeking the Lord in this space. And so thank you for enabling me to do that. And uh, I will see you guys next time. God bless.